man, it's a coup d'etat in, uh, in Burundi brings me to Durban. Um, this was all supposed to happen at the washing station or in our cupping lab in Burundi, but there's a, there was about a couple weeks ago, there was, well, for a month, over a month, there's been this unrest where when Pierre Nkurunziza, the current president, decided to run for a third term, which is not exactly uh, legal in the Constitution, but not exactly e legal either. So I have no opinion, for the record. Uh, but, but a lot of people have an opinion, and they don't think it's right. So for over a month now, there's been protests, not just regular protests, there's violent protests, burning cars, putting containers in the street to block the streets. It just really violent, people throwing stones, people getting shot and killed for the last month. And then partway through, uh, one of the generals from the military said that he disagreed with what was going on and he disagreed right when the president had gone to Tanzania to talk with the other leaders of, the, of East Africa about how to get things done and uh, how to calm things down. And then that was when he announced a coup d'etat. And that, um, it's, it's affected it quite a bit um, in the fact of we can't get can't get supplies. We can't get we can't get fuel. It's a non-existent. So you're scavenging and getting everything on the black market. All of our suppliers are shut down. They're just locking their doors. And then and then traveling up and down between the city and the washing station. Of course, then there's military roadblocks. And trucks can't get up and down. So it's, it's been hectic. And then on top of that, you know, as a family, it just became so violent in the city. They closed the school down for good. So. Boys haven't been in school for two weeks or two months, and then all of a sudden now it's we're finding ourselves in a position where it's just too violent to actually stay in the country. So, so we ended up um, we've been for two months we've been staying up in the hills. After a while, you just can't do that with family. Can't keep going from little place to little place up in the hills anymore. It's pretty rural, pretty pretty out there, and and so now we're took the family, took all the samples I had from. Uh, from the first part of harvest, took them here, and my team is uh, still processing and harvesting, and so I gotta go back to Burundi now in about a week to collect the next part of the samples, get the first half of the harvest to the dry mill, and from there we'll, we'll see if the government office is open to export. What this is, we have two washing stations, and Every washing station, um, we have five different hills. So we have 10 different hills. And, and I'm just gonna... So, so two washing stations, five hills, five hills per station. And what we do is every day, we separate each hill's coffee. So, and then from each, so that, that's, so every day we have 10 lots of coffee and then we do A1 and A2. So we actually have 20 lots of coffee for every single day. Um, what that does is it allows us to trace not just to Burundi, not just to um, a washing station or a region, but to a specific hill at a specific washing station in a specific province. And then we have a list of about maybe 30 to 100 farmers from that hill that deliver for that specific coffee. So this lot might be from Haza washing station in Kayanza province from Gitwe Hill from a specific day, from let's say March 20th. And then we're gonna decide how that scores, what the flavor, flavor profile is, and then similar flavor profile from that specific hill will be blended to make a micro lot. That's what we're doing. 12th edition, so. 12th edition, oh my gosh. It's pretty crazy, yeah, so. Oh man. I think it's gonna be a good one, so we're very excited about that. Um, and that's how all good. Still loving it. Still getting to well, do amazing and that's, things. <laughs> and that's that's the key. It's like yeah. you just can love it. Every single day, every single hill is about yeah. A1 and A2, so it's about a thousand a thousand different lots to cut every season. So this